This is the development committee? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's going to give a little introduction on the subdivision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, perfect. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> you wonder why everybody's staring you down? Yeah. <laughs> What's, the time? What's, the, What's the artificial pressure? Oh, my word. No, those are yours. Oops. Oh, this is the speaker. Petition 45. Oh, you're on. Uh, yes, I don't. Yeah. So I think that's what I want. That's what some of the uh, people that are in are. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the time of 10 o'clock, 10.02, being current, um, I'm going to call the Tuesday, December 15th meeting of the Kane County Development Committee to order. If the clerk would please call the roll. I got one. Brown? Here. Berman? Ford? Here. Igbal? Igbal, yes. Caius? Caius. Wonicki. Wonicki, present. Thank you. Mr. Berman, are you here? Yeah, he was, a, okay. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I'd right. just like to confirm if I, am I on this committee as ex officio for transportation? I'm not. I'm, I'm going to, because you're don't, you don't show today, I'm going to assume that that will happen, but that as of today, you probably shouldn't vote. I will use the Wonicki rule. Thank you. So it's the same thing with, uh, we also need to confirm the uh, status of Mr. Kaios, who would normally as the president of the Forest Preserve be an ex officio member. So I'm not certain if he's gonna serve as a member of this board. I'm, I'm gonna guess you'd probably be the ex officio member from the Forest Preserve and that uh, there'd be another person appointed. But yeah, I think, I think so you, you once the, are uh, voting today as a board member and not as a Forest Preserve president. Right, that would take, my understanding of conversations with the state's attorney that that would take precedence over uh, ex officio, but I think we're gonna arrange uh, some different situation in the future. Okay, uh, so we have a quorum. Um, before we begin, well, let's let's approve the minutes from the uh, from the last meeting. That would be November seventeenth. So moved. Ms. Winicky moves. Second Mr. Ford, Ford. seconds. Uh, any comments or questions? Hearing none. Please, would the clerk call the roll? Brown. Yes. Berman. Ford. Yes. Iqbal. Iqbal. Yes. Hayes. I think I'll abstain just because I wasn't involved in it. Okay, Moniki? Yes. Thank you. Motion carried, the minutes stand approved. Uh, before we begin with reports, uh, I would like to uh, take this moment uh, 
we have uh, pretty much a whole good group of uh, seasoned, either current or former board members. Uh, and Mr. Berman comes with a level of municipal experience, but nonetheless, I'd like to take just a minute to have uh, our three department heads uh, introduce themselves and uh, what it is they do so that we enter this uh, enter this year with uh, some understanding. And I'm gonna call them in the order they would show on the uh, uh, agenda, which would start with Mark Van Kirkhoff. Wait, excuse me, Mark, something's wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. You sound a lot more like Chicken Little than uh, Mark Van Kirkhoff. Okay. All right, then let's uh, let's move to uh, next to Jody Walnick. Thank you. I am the director of environmental water resources as well as the plat officer for the county. Um, I would like to introduce Deanne Orlick, if you could come up and um, go first through the subdivision portion and land cache of uh, the areas that we cover. Good morning, and thank you for having me uh, in front of you today. You're going to see my face, masked or not masked, um, several times in the coming future because our, my primary job is the subdivisions, the land cache, followed by building permits, stormwater permits, and violations. So a lot of those things will appear before you, and if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. I just want to also recognize Deanne for the hard work that she's done in the uh, several years she's been here with the county. We did in uh, the prior year uh, improve the land cash ordinance quite significantly. That ordinance had a lot of paperwork uh, as it related to the school districts and the park districts that we work with um, when a new subdivision comes in. They either provide cash towards those districts or uh, land in lieu of the cash. And it was a very uh, extensive process that we had to go through on the county side, as well as on the park district and school district side to transfer those funds to those entities. Ms. Orlick uh, worked very hard to revise that land cash ordinance. It's now a standalone ordinance. And it's a very, very, very efficient ordinance um, that allows the funds from the subdivision to go directly to the um, park districts or the school districts <coughs> and avoids all that additional paperwork and staff time that's related to that. In addition, um, we are currently in the process of marking up the subdivision ordinance. It has not been improved in many years. There's a lot of conflicts within that ordinance and a lot of conflicts with Mr. Van Kirkhoff's zoning ordinance, especially as it relates to PUDs. And so we're in the process of marking up that ordinance with the intent in the coming years to make some revisions to it and uh, additional improvements that will make it more efficient as well, as well as a more simpler process for anyone going through the subdivision process on the county side. My um, group as well, we have two engineers, uh, Ann Wilford and Rob Linke, who work with myself on the cost share drainage program. Those approvals come through the Riverboat Committee um, with the projects that are allocated funds from the Riverboat, but they do come to this committee as an approval um, in a memo process, not a formal resolution or anything in that regards, um, to formally approve the cost split for those drainage projects. <clears throat> These are drainage projects. We work with small municipalities and unincorporated areas of the county. Um, Long-standing drainage problems that involve many older subdivisions that we have that are reliant on old agricultural drainage systems. Um, we've completed hundreds of projects in this program and resolved many, many issues that were significant flooding issues for the residents um, of their primary stru structures, of their uh, septic systems. Um, and certainly improve the, water, the uh, health and safety welfare of our residents through that program. In addition to that, uh, we do do any other stormwater related items under water resources in this committee. 
specifically for the unincorporated areas of the county. We are the um, administrator for unincorporated stormwater permits that are issued through the county as well as uh, the director, but that is handled under the stormwater committee itself. And lastly, we do the Settlers Hill end use plan. Um, this is uh, a separated between this committee and the E&E committee, specifically um, in regards to the landfill or any transfer stations, along with our solid waste plan falls under the E&E committee. So if we have issues with landfill gas or leachate or anything in that regards, that would go through the E&E committee, but the end use, um, such as the cross country course falls under this committee and any future uses that occur out there. So I'm available if there's any other questions. Thank you. Thanks. And, and Jody truly is available. If you have any questions, she's very good at uh, responding to telephone calls. And I might volunteer one thing. It's, I think it's important from a jurisdictional standpoint, our zoning ordinance, uh, in fact, uh, deals with areas that are not otherwise incorporated into municipalities. So I think by way of example, we all received a letter from some homeowners relative to a, a, a subdivision or a zoning issue in North Aurora. That is a North Aurora issue and not a, a county issue. And uh, uh, most of us have municipalities in our district and, and it can become a confusing issue if you tend to get involved. But the easy and correct answer is that, that if it's not, if it's included in, in some municipality city limits, uh, the county does not exercise and has no zoning ju uh, jurisdiction. Mr. Berger. Booted off this call twice now, so I, I hope to, I hope to stay on. You're, you're loud and clear. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm happy to introduce myself to uh, those of you who might not know me. Um, I'm the director of the Office of Community Reinvestment, and we are an office that's comprised of two divisions. Uh, the Workforce Development Division is the slightly larger of the two divisions of my office and placement assistance uh, within a three county workforce development area that includes both DeKalb and Kendall counties. Uh, that division of our office reports to the jobs committee of the county board, as well as a uh, three county workforce development board. Um, the division of community development reports to uh, this committee and oversees a mix of programs aimed at improving the condition of our housing stock, as well as the living conditions within uh, the more urbanized areas of our county. Um, in addition to overseeing a mix of federal funding sources primarily from the U.S. Departments of Housing and Urban Development and Labor. Um, our office also is under contract to manage the city of Elgin's federal funding, as well as the city of St. Charles's um, housing trust fund. So oversee and manage uh, your Grand Victoria Riverboat Fund. So it's a, it's a local gaming fund that, that we help to administer. Um, I have a staff of 24 full-time and two part-time individuals, and all are very hardworking, both remotely and in the office right now. So we're happy to uh, keep these programs up and going uh, to serve you and your constituents better. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Scott. Seeing no questions, we will then, I wanna thank everybody for the introductions and uh, move to the regular agenda, which would um, bring. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Mark, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh, very well now. OK, thank you. I uh, just left and came back in. So um, thank you for that. Uh, what I was saying in Chipmunk um, was uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome back. And. Uh, uh, good to see uh, everyone via Zoom, uh, but everyone welcome to the committee. Uh, we look forward to uh, working with you. Um, brief introduction of the Development and Community Services Department. Uh, we're comprised of 19, uh, mostly full-time, a few part-time uh, people. Um, I sent, Blair, if you're there, I sent a, a slide um, that I've used in budget presentations. I don't know if you're able to put that up, but uh, if you are, great. If not, no, no big issue, um, but so 
primarily uh, most of our team, well, all of our team is working remotely. We're very grateful to IT for that. Uh, everyone has stayed healthy. So as a result, we've been able to um, pretty much work at full uh, capacity providing our services um, by taking in permits and zoning applications uh, online, taking payments online, uh, conducting zoning hearings, uh, adjudication hearings, all sorts of things via Zoom. So we've been able to work uh, basically as if uh, we were here. We're very grateful for that. Uh, thank you, Blair. So some of the programs that uh, our team is involved with, uh, uh, probably the largest one in terms of revenue and activity and supports the local economy is building and zoning. Uh, we take in uh, building permits for the unincorporated areas of the county, plus three of our uh, small villages that don't have uh, their own uh, staff or, or hired service to do their building permits. Uh, we have inspectors that are out doing inspections, uh, following protocols and guidelines. Um, we have a team are taking in applications and payments online, answering a lot of questions. Uh, we have a zoning team of, uh, of two people, one of whom just uh, started maternity leave um, and everything's going well with uh, her and her family. Um, but we uh, likewise support our zoning board with Zoom hearings online um, and uh, you'll see zoning petitions this morning uh, come regularly uh, through to the county board. And uh, I'll be sending out some additional information for new board members um, with that as well. Uh, we also do uh, code enforcement and uh, for the unincorporated areas. Uh, typically in uh, normal times, we were splitting that uh, work with uh, uh, the health department. Uh, but since the pandemic hit, uh, we've assumed all the uh, property maintenance and code enforcement activities for the county. Uh, we also, out of our department, host the administrative adjudication hearings once a month. Uh, those are also used by water resources and the health department for pursuing violations. It's kind of court light. It's been a very good program, very successful in getting compliance um, on uh, cases that otherwise uh, need some encouragement. Uh, we also have a, a planning team. Uh, we do countywide planning with the uh, support the work of the Regional Planning Commission. Um, we uh, work in a coordinated way with uh, KDOT and with our health department and with our municipalities since we have 30 municipalities in the county all working together in this great county of ours uh, to uh, keep things working well. Uh, we also, our planning division uh, supports uh, uh, several other committees that uh, many of you may be on, the uh, Energy and Environmental Committee, uh, Jobs Committee, and a Committee. So a lot of that uh, work gets reported out to those committees. Uh, we also uh, oversee the Kane Energy Efficiency Program, which uh, we're very excited. This week we should be closing on our second deal, which would be a $3 million deal uh, uh, supporting energy efficiency work at the former Copley Hospital <coughs> site. So we're excited about that. Um, and uh, economic development, we support the work of the Jobs Committee and then uh, Farmland Protection and Growing for Kane. Uh, which supports our uh, great agricultural resources, both soils um, and land resources, as well as working with our uh, human resources, our farmers who have uh, been working very hard during this pandemic to continue to provide local produce and food. So that's the kind of things in a, in a nutshell with our department um, and happy to answer any questions that you might have. Otherwise I'll move on to the building and zoning report. I see no questions. If there are none, before you move on, uh, we were out of order here and I would like to ask for our monthly financials. If I could, please. Good morning. The November uh, finance reports are included in your agenda packet for review. Uh, those reports are drafts because November is the last month of fiscal of uh, the county's fiscal year. So the last month of fiscal year 20 for the county and it's going to uh, take us a couple of very hard months to uh, close out the year. And then uh, around the end of March, you will have a full report of um, how the year is closed out. Um, in the general fund, uh, I, I'm sorry, environmental management uh, is over budget in the areas of benefits and contractual services. There is a budget adjustment resolution on today's agenda for your consideration to rectify that overage and uh, environmental management did work with the finance department regarding that uh, adjustment. So 
be happy to answer any uh, questions you have regarding our reports. Are there any questions of our finance department representative? Thanks. Thanks so Seeing much. Seeing none. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Um, public comment is next, and I've uh, noted that Marco is uh, Izakovic uh, is signed up to speak relative to petition forty five sixty four. Um, do you are you on the line, sir? I'm. You show him my line. Yeah, he is, but he's muted. There we go. I'm on. Um, my question of you before uh, we move on is: d Did you want to make a presentation, or are you here to ask answer questions regarding the petition? I'm here to answer questions on behalf of MWave. Aaron Rinky will be the attorney. who will be presenting, and I will just be here to answer any additional questions. Okay, then I, I will uh, move on to um, the presentations. And should there be questions when your petition arises, we will ask you to address them. Mr. Van Kirkhoff. Hey, good morning. Thank you, Blair, for putting up that uh, slide last minute for me for uh, illustrating mm -hmm. introductions. Uh, building and zoning report, I just have a verbal report for you this morning. As I mentioned, uh, everyone's working remotely, everyone's healthy. We're very grateful for that. Uh, we are continuing to see uh, quite a bit of uh, homeowner improvement activity uh, with uh, the swimming pools, public pools being closed or very limited this summer. We did see a, a huge increase in number of swimming pool permits uh, this summer. Uh, we are continuing to uh, support a number of uh, projects uh, that are coming through, uh, both residential and, and some uh, commercial projects. So we are keeping uh, busy. Uh, I have also um, contacted uh, our new director, Foster, with the health department and let them know if they need any additional resources uh, in terms of vehicles or staffing to help with any of the uh, vaccine support. Um, you know, we're happy to discuss that with them and see what uh, we can do to help, especially in the the next three months, we typically construction activity slows down. So we're uh, making ourselves available uh, for that effort as well. Um, with that, that's all I have on the uh, building and zoning report. And we can move on to petitions unless there's any questions. Do we have any questions of Mr. Van Kirkhoff? Hearing none, would you please then begin with the petitions? Sure. The first uh, petition is 4563 uh, Morning Star Church. Uh, this is a rezoning. Um, <clears throat> from uh, E1 to E3. Uh, this is a uh, existing church site and uh, residents that has served as the parsonage. This will allow them to um, divide the, uh, the, the home off from the, the rest of the property with the church uh, so that they can uh, sell that as a uh, separate single family home. Um, this uh, went to the zoning board on, on last week, Tuesday. Um, it, uh, they recommended approval with the following stipulations that the well and septic system have to be completely enclosed on the new parcel. Uh, water resources will require an inspection maintenance report for the detention facilities on the uh, overall site and uh, also require all floodplain and stormwater facilities pre recorded and drainage conservation easements. Um, uh, Jody Walnick's also here if there's any questions on any of those uh, stipulations. Um, maybe if you could uh, blare forward through, there's a PowerPoint at the end of the uh, uh, the more mapping part that kind of gives its location uh, that some of the uh, petition, uh, here's the, uh, uh, thank you, Blair, the illustrations on it. If you go to the next one, it, um, and I'll kind of walk through how, how we typically do these presentation formats. This is basically the petition, this slide up now shows the um, subject parcel on the 2040 plan map, which is the uh, 2040 future land use map is what the county board has adopted as a blueprint uh, guiding future development and rezoning. Uh, this is an area of uh, plan for resource management area, which means it could be a multiple of uses, um, typically uh, either uh, developed uh, through a county rezoning action or through a municipal annexation, in this case, a county action. So the uh, proposed use is consistent with the 2040 plan. Go to the next slide. And we typically show the map that shows it with the actual zoning map. Uh, that 
uh, everything with the red hashing is uh, in a municipality. In this case, the uh, city of Aurora, you can see is uh, very present in this area. Uh, the areas that are white are zoned up to strict farming and then the other colors and designations are as shown. There's a couple that show E1 and R1 in different colors. Those are different residential zoning uh, categories and this is a uh, existing E1 and they're proposing E3 to allow the uh, appropriate lot size for the existing home. We can move on to the next slide. Uh, this just shows an aerial, gives you an idea of the land use uh, patterns that exist. You can see some of the residential uses along Prairie Street and some of the subdivisions in the city of Aurora. You can move on to the next map. Uh, here you can see the residential proposed residential parcel uh, with the existing house and the existing church and parking lot. You can move on to the next one. Just another uh, close up of uh, the existing home is closest to the Prairie Street and there's two existing detached structures. And then you can see the creek, uh, Blackberry Creek uh, winding to the east there. Uh, we can move to the next map. And there's just another close up. Uh, this would also give you relative to the creek some of the uh, conditions that uh, were recommended by water resources regarding the uh, floodplain uh, areas and conservation easement. Okay, move on to the next one. Uh, here's the actual uh, plat of subdivision that was submitted. And you can move on to the next one. Another close up, this one with more of the topography added. And the next slide. So here again are the stipulations that uh, I already went through uh, for your review. Jody, I don't know if you have anything you wanna to add to the water resource stipulations. I don't have anything specific to add. Uh, the detention basin that was on this property was built in the early 90s and predates our stormwater ordinance. It's typical practice for us to include a requirement to bring those detention basins back up to maintenance standards as well as establish a long-term maintenance uh, agreement with that owner and provide for the drainage easements that we typically see in modern storm basins. And so that's what these stipulations specify for this property. Great, thank you, Jody. Um, and then the next slide. Uh, staff recommend its findings of fact is that the rezoning will allow the existing home to be sold off separately from the rest of the church process property. And the next slide. So this is a summary of all actions that have uh, happened uh, prior to coming before you this morning. Uh, Regional Plan Planning Commission, this was not applicable because it was consistent with the county's adopted land use map the 2040 plan, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, they uh, recommend approval to with staff recommended stipulations. Um, it's for your consideration this morning, either to recommend an approval onto the full county board uh, with the recommended stipulations. Um, you also have the ability to add any additional stipulations that you as a committee seem fit uh, to. And then uh, once your action this morning, it would go on to the next full county board um, meeting for their vote. The full board vote is the final action on all zoning petitions. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. And before we do that, may we please have a motion for approval? Mr. Ford moves. Ms. Winnicki seconds. The discussion, Mr. Ford. Yes, uh, how many acres or how much land is, that, is the uh, house on? Uh, if you could go back to the plat, I think it's going to be about I, I can't read. I think it's about an, over an acre and a half to two acres. Some of it is in the uh, um, floodplain. It's zoned to E3, which would be, or E1 now, which would be a four acre minimum. They are asking for E3, which will allow it to be large, smaller than the four acres. My apologies. I don't have that information right in front of me and I can't read the. Uh, um, that's good enough. Text Just on one more map. question. Are they going to maintain that? Look, there's an access from the house to the church. Are they going to maintain that access or? Uh, mean the walkway? Yes. Access? That I do not know. I imagine if they were to follow through with their plans to sell it uh, separately, that they would 
I mean, I guess it would be between them and the new owner. If the new owner was going to attend the church, they might want to keep the access. If not, um, they might have that removed. But, but to clarify, is that that's a walkway and not anything for vehicular traffic? That's correct. Okay. <coughs> Other questions? Mr. Kyos? Just the curiosity, the uh, it is in the floodplain. Is that the on uh, the far right hand side, the dotted line? Is, is it subject to flooding? Is it like a hundred year flood? The grassed area is in the floodplain, the structures are not. Any other questions? Hearing none, would the uh, clerk please call the roll? Berman? Yes. Ford? Yes. Igbo? Igbo, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Nikki? Yes. Brown? Yes. Passes. Did you call Berman? I did. I think you and Mr. Brown maybe um, answered at the same time. All Berman? Right. Berman, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries. The petition stands approved for recommendation. The next matter before us is petition 4564. Good morning. Yeah, and Blair, if you could go to the PowerPoint. Uh, so this is petition 4564. Uh, this is for M-Wave Networks LLC requesting special use in the F Farming District to allow four private communication towers to be constructed on the property. By a little way of background, uh, private communication towers are um, listed in the uh, F District is requiring a special use. Um, that is for any private communication towers as opposed to cell towers, which are, have a public utility exemption. Um, those are permitted uses. In this case, uh, they're proposing uh, private communication towers that are not exempt under the state uh, statutes. So they are requesting a special use uh, to construct these. Can we move on to the next slide? Uh, this is on the uh, 2040 land use map, um, showing that it's in an area for a resource management area. Um, I should mention, as you can see on this map um, as well, that there are several forest preserves uh, nearby, one immediately adjacent to the uh, north. And uh, we did uh, coordinate uh, with the forest preserve district so that they could make sure that they um, reviewed the application um, and comments. Uh, if you can move on to the next slide. Here is the uh, zoning map. <clears throat> you can see, again, the Forest Preserve District. Um, the, uh, the swath um, of white uh, to the right there is actually uh, I-88. I think you can see the label um, up to the side of the Forest Preserve District. And then we have a number of special uses. Uh, that's the black hash area. Um, some of those are gravel pits. Uh, some of those are for other um, special uses in that area. And then we actually have a couple of an industrial zone um, properties uh, up further to the north. You can go to the next slide, please. Uh, here's the aerial. Um, again, you can see the subject parcel. It's on um, a corner of a parcel that's being used for farming. You can see the forest preserve to the north, uh, the gravel pit, uh, special use up along Main Street, and uh, some of the other uses in the area as well as now you can see the, the uh, tollway very clearly. You can move to the next slide. Uh, here's a, a close-up. Uh, you can also see there are no residences or other structures in the nearby vicinity. You can move to the next slide. Uh, there's another close-up uh, of the area proposed for the uh, towers. You can move to the next slide, please. They're again just uh, currently being farmed. And the next slide. Now this is their proposal. Um, it would be four uh, towers, uh, given the uh, location on the property would be accessed off of Lorang Road. Uh, their lease area is 200 feet by 200 feet. You could move to the next slide. Uh, staff recommended stipulations. Uh, King County Division of Transportation uh, he has requirements uh, regarding um, uh, getting approval from the Township Highway Commissioner for any work equipment, coordinating with the Highway Commissioner to stabilize the construction entrance, um, coordinate the access point with the Township Highway Commissioner, and also dedicate and prove out um, or prove out a prior, prior dedication of 33 feet of right away from the center line. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, um, 
much of the uh, unincorporated areas of the county originally roads were uh, constructed in what are called prescriptive right of ways, which mean that the the owner actually owns to the center line of the road. And part of the pol county's policies over time with uh, special uses and other land use changes is to have those prescriptive right of ways uh, converted to be dedicated uh, either to the township highway uh, department or Kane County or to the state if it happens to be a state highway. But it's just good public practice to get those roadways eventually into um, a dedicated right of way situation. Um, and then also the uh, Kane County Water Resources Department has stipulations for recreating a stormwater permit. And I don't know, can you go to the next slide? Okay, those are their one stipulation. So staff recommended findings of fact, I will allow for four communication towers to be constructed on the property. And if you could go to the next slide. Again, uh, it's consistent with the land use plan. So there's no regional planning commission input required. Zoning board of appeals uh, recommended approval with this, the staff stipulations. And it's before you this morning. Um, I know Jody Wellnick is here. I don't know if anyone from KDOT is still present. If they have any, uh, can answer any questions on the stipulations. And with that, I'll turn that over back to you, Mr. Chairman. May we please have a motion? Mr. Fraz moves. Mr. Brown, or Mr. Ford, <laughs> seconds. Uh, do we have comments or questions? Ms. Winnicki? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I actually have two questions. One is uh, normally, I think it's stated how tall the towers will be, and I'm not seeing it in the, uh, um, the zoning board description here. Uh, that's one question. And then my second question is, uh, it says the site contains depression areas. This depressional storage must be preserved. I'm not sure I understand what that is. Is that just to catch the storm water or are, are they cemetery maybe sites or something you really- well, let's, let's answer your questions in order. First, okay. the, Mark, do you have the information relating to the height of the tower? Uh, we have the uh, petitioner on the line. I'll defer to him to answer the question. Uh, good morning. My name is Aaron Ranke. I represent uh, M Wave LLC. Um, I have uh, Dave Dobson, Chris Barton, and Marco Isakovic with me here this morning. But I think I can answer your question very quickly and directly. Uh, approximately 155 feet will be the height of the proposed towers. Okay, so Mr. Rinke, may I ask please that you spell your last name or spell your name and offer an address for purposes of the record? My apologies. Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, Rinke, R-E-I-N-K-E, -E, 1250 Larkin Avenue. That's L-A-R-K-I-N, Elgin. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Winnicki, I think you were asking a follow-up of Mr. Rinke. Um, I am, uh, yeah. As far as the height goes, I think that should be stated in uh, the description here, or maybe for the full county board. But my second question is uh, the, the, the depression areas, what are the depression areas? And are they there for water I'm gonna uh, ask runoff? Ms. I'm gonna ask Ms. Wonick to okay. address that. Thank you. Those are natural occurring storage areas for stormwater that are regulated under our King County Stormwater Ordinance. And so the purpose of stating that in the uh, stipulations is to make the owner aware that those areas cannot be filled, that they're there naturally to um, manage stormwater and that potentially filling them could impact an adjacent property owner. And so any filling of those areas would need to go through our stormwater permit process. Okay. Thank you. Good move on that, Jody. Thanks. Well, I just want to clarify this height issue. Are we adding a, a height not to exceed to this, or does the ordinance not require that, or what, what would you recommend, Mark? Uh, there really is not a, uh, a, a not to exceed. You could say not to exceed uh, 180 or pick a number um, if you'd like. I'm looking to see if it was stipulated in the, uh, I'll double check see if it's stipulated in the petition, but uh, my apologies that it's not uh, summarized with the summary information in terms of the height, we do usually include that in the description. 
I do believe it's referenced in the petition, um, uh, perhaps on the cover letter. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we do have it as part of the submission. Am I correct? Yes, I'm, I'm double checking. Oh, okay, all right. Yes, I, I see it on my letter dated September the 21st, which also <clears throat> transmit the, uh, transmits the, uh, the application. I think uh, could I, I'll make a motion just to include that in the summary as we move it forward to exec and then the full county board. Okay, I don't think it even needs to be a uh -huh. formal record. As long as we can operate by consensus, we include that as part of the record. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can okay. you do that, so Mark? We will do that again. My, my apologies, it is both in the petition and in the uh, staff report um, that was uh, submitted and circulated uh, with the notices that the maximum tower height will be 150 feet. Okay, thank you very much. If that could be then included in the board's report. Uh, Mr. Fries? Yeah, this is located in my district. So I, I had the same question on height. And so I'll follow up also with the same, another question. What type of construction tower is this? Is it the monopole, the guide wired style or lattice freestanding? What is it? So I guess that'd be to the petitioner. Yes, I, um, uh, Marco and, and Chris, unless, uh, please feel free to chime in if I misstate, but it is a monopole. We are not using guy wires. Um, the FAA has approved uh, the construction without lighting. Um, and in consultation with Fish and Wildlife uh, Service, uh, the uh, security lighting itself will be on um, uh, motion sensors. So um, none of those issues should be a, a, a concern. And would you be willing to agree uh, as an additional stipulation on the site lighting that it be uh, meet dark sky standards and be fully shrouded? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so yeah, based on that, this is, again, this is my district. I'm very familiar with this area. Um, and as Mark stated in his presentation, this, this is right in the heart of gravel mining country. So a lot of the parcels surrounding it are uh, either active gravel pits or former gravel pits that are being used for construction and landscape recycling. Actually, KDOT owns property just, just off the map to the south. <clears throat> the south where our salt domes and former gravel mining operation were. And then there is those industrial uh, points to the north as well as the I-88 uh, area. So uh, 155 is a pretty moderate height. So um, I, I would support this as the local board member. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Eggball? Eggball, yes. Tyus? Tyus, yes. Wunicki? Yes. Fraz? Yeah, I, I'm abstaining because I'm not officially oh, that's right. noted on the, the roll call <laughs> for this meeting. Brown? Yes. You know, that's right, he moved. Oh, I'll, so I'll, I'll do the I motion would, for him there. I'll do the motion. Okay. Can we get another person here? Yeah, let's, Mr. Ford moves, Mr. Kaios seconds. And removed and re-seconded. Does anyone want to change the vote that they've already cast? Hearing no one changing, we will adapt those votes. So I guess I guess we describe your status, Mr. Fries, today as in futuro. <laughs> Lim <limbo. laughs> All right. Uh, motion carries. The petition will be recommended for approval to the full board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we now have planning and special projects. Great. Good morning. This will be my last item for the committee this morning. Uh, what we do as part of our report to development committee uh, is do a summary of the activities of our planning team. As I mentioned earlier, they uh, primarily are, are supporting the work of the Energy Environmental Committee of uh, Food and Agriculture and uh, Jobs and Economic Development Activities. Uh, so in order to consolidate their efforts, uh, we include this in a report. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might uh, have. Um, on this report or their work, but uh, you'll mainly see them at those other committees. Thank you. 
Thanks. Are there any questions of uh, Mr. Van Kirkhoff? Hearing none. Do we have any subdivision report? None today. Then environmental resources? None of that. But we have water resources that we'd like to hear about. Yes, thank you. Um, you have before you this morning a resolution amending the fiscal year 2020 budget for environmental management. There are two items, as Ms. Wagner um, mentioned, under this budget um, adjustment. Uh, one is uh, under our stormwater ordinance. We require a deposit um, when a stormwater permit is issued. That uh, was not counted towards the liability in, uh, tw it was deposited in 2019 and um, then went into the cash balance in 2020. Um, we need to return the cashier's check to the, um, the uh, permittee and um, therefore we need to do the budget adjustment uh, to correctly uh, notate that as a liability to the general fund. And the other item in this budget adjustment is a modification that was made by one of our employees to their benefits in fiscal year FY 2020. So in total, um, it would be a $47,000 budget adjustment coming from the contingency fund. May we have a motion please? Ms. Winicki moves. Yeah. I'll second. Mr. Brown seconds. Do we have comments or questions? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Igbal? Igbal, yes. Tyus? Tyus, yes. Winnicky? Yes. Brown? Yes. Passes. Motion carries. I have 10 bring? regards Mr. Berger's Office of Community Reinvestment. Nope, we have a cost share project. Could you bring up the presentation? Oh, I'm there, sorry. Please? Thank you. Continue on, Ms. Wolnick. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have one cost share project before you this morning. As I mentioned in my introduction, our cost share projects are split funding um, between the Grand Victoria Riverboat funds that we received funds for. Um, it typically, our cost splits are between a third of the project cost to a half of the project cost, depending on the project partners. And a lot of our projects, uh, we do partner with the Township Road Districts. Um, they have been fantastic partners in this program over the years, assisting residents um, in unincorporated areas of Kane County resolve their drainage problem. So I just wanna recognize the, the Township Road Commissioners and their great work they have done in partnership with us. And then the residents themselves. Um, so if we have a road district that's partnering with us along with the resident, everyone splits it a third. Um, if we are not coming across a roadway or right of way with the, the part of the project, um, then it's often split 50-50 between our cost share funds and um, the residents funds. And um, I, I wanna also just thank all the, the subdivisions that have come together and established uh, where they don't have HOAs, um, established drainage committees, uh, to work specifically on their drainage issues and the neighboring um, property owners that have come together with the people suffering from those drainage projects to work together to have so many successful projects um, that we've completed over the years that have resolved basement flooding, first floor flooding, um, septic flooding, um, just general nuisance flooding. Um, it has run the gamut. So um, as we all know, the riverboat funds are shrinking and that's where the funds for this, pro this program come from. Um, this program has been operated since 1993 and we have assisted hundreds of residents with it. Um, it's a really great feel good program for the county uh, and uh, the resources that we put towards it um, are minimal compared to the amount of funds that we bring in to partner with ourselves um, to get these projects completed. So um, I do have one project, as I mentioned, we don't go through resolution for these projects. They're approved through the Riverboat Committee as part of our budget, but when the project is ready to be constructed, we do bring them towards this to, to this committee for a memo approval. Um, it does not go on to the county board from here. It just stops at this committee and then we go and complete the project. Um, we have not for last year, we did not provide a uh, annual report typically in January or February, we do do an annual report of all the projects that were completed. 
And um, because of the stay at home order, everyone was looking out their back windows at their drainage projects. So um, we had an unbelievable number of projects completed this year that we're very proud of. Um, Rob Linke of our staff did a great job in completing some projects that had been hanging out there for 10 years or more. So we're very excited um, in early 2021 to show you some photos of those long term projects and um, how significant the flooding was in some of those issues. So. I'll get on with uh, I'll get on with the rest of the show. So today we have uh, one project. It's the Plank Road Drainage Improvement Project. It's located in unincorporated Plato Township. It's a drain tile failure resulting in extensive property flooding, um, and the residents have agreed to work together to financially share in the cost of the repla replacing the drain tile through their property to resolve the flooding problem. Next slide, please. So here is the extent of the project. It's about 800 foot of pipe that will go in with two new structures in the area circled in red. Um, the system upstream and downstream is functional. And so they're just looking at replacing that center section. Next slide, please. And here's the cost share. We're at approximately a third of the project cost on this one. Um, the residents are funding 9,500. We're th funding 5,500 for a total project cost of $15,000. So we recommend approval of the Plank Road drainage cost share to this committee. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? My district, I'll move it. Hearing no questions or comments, but a motion from Ms. Wanicki. Do we have a second? Does it require a motion? It does? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown, any any other comments or questions? Hearing none. Oh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, Mr. Cayos. Uh, just a comment on the side here. I just had the water main in my house start leaking after 20 years, and it cost $5,000 to have that little bitty thing fixed. So this is, these are a bargain. These are great. Thank you for that. Well, Thank you for that observation. <laughs> great support. This is a great yes. thing to support. All yeah. in favor. Okay. Would the clerk please call the roll? Berman. Berman, yes. Ford. Yes. Igbal. Igbal, yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Wunicki. Yes. Brown. Yes. Motion carries. I think it's worthy of comment at this point in time. This the the riverboat funds have for years, uh, particularly since the advent of video gambling, have been a dwindling resource. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year they're going to be, I'm trying, looking for my adjective, cataclysmically diminished because of the COVID virus and the lack of activity at the casino. So what we're, as a, as a group, uh, particularly the Riverboat Committee, but uh, all of the various activities within this county that depend upon uh, the riverboat funds are uh, uh, are are going to be under stress because of changes in circumstances that really are beyond our control. So uh, we, we need to keep that in mind as we move forward and, and plan these activities. That's Mr. Sermon. This is yes. Deborah Allen. Yes, Ms. Allen. I just wanted to say that um, one of Mr. Hoshite's many contributions to the county and the forest preserve has always been, if you have some kind of windfall or some kind of savings, you tuck that money away for the rainy day. And one of the things that happened uh, last year was that we got more money in from the riverboat than we expected or that we budgeted for. Um, it was, I think, a couple hundred thousand dollars more. And so rather than spend that in the 2020 year, we put that aside. So there's at least a little cushion to help with, as you say, the uh, cataclysmic uh, shortfalls that we're going to be experience. But at least there's a little something in the in the pot for 2021. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for that uh, for that. Solving away. You bet. Thank Mr. Ho any other comments? Mr. Berger from the Office of Community Reinvestment. Scott. <clears throat> Scott. 
Good morning, Chairman Martin and members of the committee. Uh, we do have one item for you today. Uh, yes, can you hear me? We can, yes. Can, can you hear me? Before. Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Can you, can you? Can you hear oh, me? You can, oh, you, you can. Um, so we have one item for you today. Yes, I can. Yes, I can hear you. Good. Okay, we have one item for you. Uh, our office was recently notified by the Illinois Department of Human Services uh, that we have been awarded an emergency solutions grant in the amount of $377,662. Uh, these are federal funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. I mentioned that as one of our principal funding agencies uh, earlier in the meeting. Um, the emergency solutions grant program is aimed at solving homelessness. And this award will help support the provision of what we refer to as rapid rehousing services. Essentially, that's rent and utility assistance, as well as case management services uh, to individuals that have become homeless but have the potential uh, to achieve stability and self sufficiency and live independently with a hand up. So uh, these are individuals that are less vulnerable among the homeless population, and we identify them during our intake and evaluation process. Um, so our intention is to quickly help them get back on their feet and uh, on their own, which helps reduce uh, in the short term uh, the shelter population and then actually in the long term actually cost the taxpayers less. So the resolution before you today amends the budget for special revenue fund for we anticipate with this a new award, and uh, we think it will complement our other initiatives to address homelessness in Kane County. So we have a resolution here for your consideration. We're recommending you approve this and send this on to executive. Thank you. Thank you. May we have a motion, please? Mr. Ford moves. Mr. Kyle seconds. Accepting money is always a pleasure. So I doubt we have too many comments or questions, but are there any? Well, Hearing I, none, maybe with the clerk. I make a comment, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I really like the items that's on that list. Uh, it, it, it broadens what it takes for people to survive more so than just uh, the standard type of support. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? <clears throat> yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Onicki? Yes. Brown? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries. Anything else, Scott? Uh, no, that's the only item we have for you. Thank you right. very much. Thank you. Uh, Sellers Hill end use update uh, for the new members on the commission. I just want to offer a short explanation of what that end use uh, is about. Uh, decades ago, the uh, county entered into a I think fundamentally a handshake agreement with that affected the city of Geneva and city of Batavia that permitted the continuing operation of Settlers Hill landfill. And in the context of that agreement, the city agreed uh, the, 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 to not contest the existence of the landfill in return for waste management and the county's uh, agreement that they would deposit tipping funds from each truck that went in there to uh, at the end of that landfill's life restore that landfill to a uh, recreational amenity. And that, uh, that those tipping fees have been either, have been instrumental in the provision of the uh, Cougars baseball stadium, the, uh, the soccer facility that's out there, the, um, uh, the, the ice rink that's been constructed um, the golf course, which is now under reconstruction, uh, using what amounts to being the, the substantive residue of those funds. Um, and uh, most recently completed was the cross country course, which is uh, uh, on top of Settlers Hill. And uh, but, for the, uh, but for the COVID uh, interruption this fall would have been operating and, and uh, having races. Uh, and that season is, fundamentally a, a fall season that begins at Labor Day. It ends roughly at Thanksgiving. Uh, the balance of the year, that facility will be available as a forest preserve amenity for hiking and picnicking and, and, uh, and, and what have you. So uh, the, the end uses have been 
determined at this point in time, and for the most part, they're being completed, the county having maintained a residue of funds to provide uh, some assurance that we have funds in hand should there be an environmental issue that isn't otherwise handled by waste management, uh, which corporation is contractually obligated, I think for yet a period of like 30, am I correct, Jody, 31 years? It's indeterminate based on the IEPA's approval of the official closure of the landfill, correct? Okay, and and so uh, that that is Settlers Hill, and uh, it'll become less and less a conversation uh, as time goes on. The, the 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 operation of the golf course has long since been in the hands of the Forest Preserve, and we anticipate that. Uh, over this coming winter, uh, the the race course being completed, it, it will be uh, turned over to the control of the Forest Preserve District. So all that being said, we, do we have any other? I just want to make a comment about, about what, what we're just talking about is, I just want to say this just enforces my thoughts and theory of uh, that area, including Fabian being a sports district for the county. It, 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 yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. Well, no, it's just, it, it's, it's one of those rare occasions where the government really did something well. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay, is there any other, any, any new business to discuss? Hearing none, may I have a motion please to replace ports, reports on file? Ms. Winicki moves, Mr. Kayo seconds. Any comments or questions related to those reports? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Winicki? Yes. Brown? Yes. Motion carries, the reports are on file. I have no knowledge of an executive session being required, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. So Brown moves. Second Ford. Mr. Ford seconds. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Meeting stands adjourned at 11.02.